Now we talk about some other applications of biology. Application of biology in animal farming or animal cultures. Human beings traditionally use animals in the culture and breed animals for getting milk, for getting meat, for getting uh, eggs and many other products. Like uh, we take eggs from um, hens, from ducks. We take milk from cows, buffaloes, goats, sheep. We get wool from the sheep. We uh, use leather of the organisms, uh, large organisms or small, buffaloes or goats, for making our shoes and jackets and other things. We get honey from honeybees. We get silk from silkworms. We culture fish for um, a very good some form of protein. We grow the pearl oysters to get pearls. There are a lot many industry, animal industries, animal-based industries in which we grow animals and we get products. In all of these industries, biology, the knowledge of biology can help us. We just look at how. There are different types of animal cultures if we uh, talk about them in terms of biology. Aquaculture, the culture uh, in water like fish, fish culture, fish farming. We grow ornamental fish. Uh, we usually have, uh, we, we like to have beautiful aquaria uh, in our houses. Ornamental fish culture. We use a specific term, sericulture. Sericulture is the term for growing silkworm, for making silk. We have dairy and poultry industries. Dairy for getting milk and poultry for getting eggs or proteins. Apiculture. Apiculture is the honey bee keeping. We culture honey bees to get honey. We also have to deal with some animals which are not good for us, the pests. Biology help us as biological pest control. That is, we can um, perform a pest control with the help of some living organisms. We look at them one by one. Aquaculture, fish farming, prawn culture, culture of the pearl oysters, other aquacultures. We, in some areas of the world, uh, people culture the clams, the freshwater clams. Uh, they culture the lobsters. When we grow fish in large pounds, uh, the fish farming, we can um, get, number one, protein, a good form of protein out of these fishes. Uh, and also, there are a lot many byproducts of the fishing industry. When we get protein and remove all the other parts of fish, we get many other byproducts which are used in sometimes cosmetics in some other industries. How biology helps us in the aquaculture? Biology helps in improvement of fish varieties and also extraction of various products from these. This is extremely important that when we are growing um, fish in a fish farm, Sometimes we grow monoculture, that is only one fish in a pound, one type of fish in a pound. But many times, uh, the biologists and the study of biology tells us that if we grow a combination of fishes which are related to each other, somehow they are which are beneficial for each other or which can easily live with each other, we can grow them in, um, in, a, uh, say in the same pound. For example, Study of biology tells us that some of the fishes, they live only in the surface of the water. Some of the fishes live in the middle layer of the water. Some of the fishes live in the uh, bottom layer of water. They could be grown in the same water without disturbing each other. And um, uh, also, sometimes um, we grow the herbivore fishes, that is fishes which eat only vegetables. But if we grow some carnivore fish, they will eat upon the herbivore fishes and will finish them. So, um, the study of biology tells us that how can we select the best varieties or the best types of fishes in the same pound. And um, of course, this will give, give us be best yield, better yield. Um, biology also tells about the feed of the fishes, which food is good for those fishes which we are growing. If we give them um, a particular food, their growth is, um, say, maybe reduced. If we give them a better designed food, then their growth may increase a lot. Also, diseases. Fishes, when we are growing them, 
there could be attack of various types of diseases upon them virus attack uh, parasite attack or any anything else biology can help us in finding out that what are the cause, causes of those diseases and how can we treat them using uh, different types of medicines or maybe um, other biological ways so uh, and and also with the help of genetic engineering sometimes we can um, add more varieties even if we do not use genetic engineering uh, genetic engineering technique we can use some improved breeding techniques based upon the knowledge of different types of uh, groups of fishes we can use some improved breeding techniques which can uh, give us better varieties to grow and they give us more proteins or uh, more of the products maybe more prawns maybe uh, more uh, pearls or maybe more good uh, uh, good varieties which have a better quality of protein or more quantity of protein so um, biology helps a lot in um, in the fishing industry same is true for the growth of ornamental fish we like to grow beautiful fishes in aquaria in our houses in um, uh, shopping plazas in hotels in various places uh they are in when they the fish are growing in aquaria this is a specific and different environment how we can feed them how we have to control the diseases in this small environment in which quantity we have to provide them food oxygen how we remove their waste materials to keep our water clean and grow our animals well biology tells us all about that because biologists study the life cycles of these organisms and their characteristics and their properties so um biology help us in um growing our ornamental fish as well now we come on the sericulture sericulture are culturing the silk worm or silk moth for making silk this is a popular home industry in many areas of the world there are a lot many people who are growing it because uh it's a simple and easy industry how we do it we just simply uh, talk about the process silk moth uh, is a sort of a worm um, and it it makes silk biology helps us in improvement of this culture what happen that uh, um the silk moth it lays eggs and those eggs um when they hatch they make larvae these larvae feed on the mulberry leaves shahtoot ke patton par uh, ye larvae grow karte hain aur unhe khate hain aur uski buds ko khate hain these larvae could be grown on the mulberry leaves um and then they are converted to a specific structure called cocoons cocoons are actually uh, threads of silk these larvae actually secretes threads of silk around them and uh, uh, the farmers who are growing them they separate that thread and then use it for making silk biologists uh, biology actually helps in improvement of Uh, the breeds of these particular silk worms how we can improve the silk worm or silk moth uh, how we can get better varieties and uh, how can we grow them better to get maximum qual- uh, quantity of the silk and also in disease control because silk worms uh, they also uh, particularly when they are larvae and they are cocoons they are making their cocoons um there are they could be attacked by different diseases in controlling their diseases um bal just also help now we talk about dairy and the poultry dairy and the poultry industries balji play a very important role most importantly when we need better varieties of uh, our uh, uh, animals 